Good afternoon. My name is Gary Catt. I'm coming to you with this, through this video today in response to a meeting that was held here in Redding, California last evening by the uh, Strategic Vision Commission um, for the Department of Fish and Game. Basically, this commission has been put together by a bill that was authored by Jared Huffman, Senator Jared Huffman, from San Rafael, California. The basic premise of this bill is to allow the Department of Fish and Game to divide strategies to fund itself so that the Fish and Game would no longer go to the state budget for funding. Now, this scares the heck out of me when a, when a state department has the right to, f to find uh, 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 different ways to fund themselves. Now, the Department of Fish and Game here a couple of years ago started in, the, in this pursuit, even before this bill was passed, uh, to start in the pursuit of, en of uh, enlarging or expanding their 1600 permits. They were doing that up on the Scott and Shasta River Valleys up in Siskiyou County, and they were going after, and still are going after, the agriculture diversion uh, folks up there, the farmers up in these two valleys. The basic, the basic premise of what they're doing is they want to expand 1600 permits to $10,000 a permit per per diversion. If somebody has three diversions, that'd be $30,000. Uh, these folks up there have water rights, some of them going back 150 years. And now the Department of Fish and Game wants to tell them they need to buy a permit to be able to, uh, to uh, uh, continue diverting water for their farms. These are all basically farmers up there. If anybody stops to think that the Fish and Game Department is able to force these folks into getting these permits, the next thing that's going to happen will be surface water. And folks, surface water are wells. And you don't think that if the Department of Fish and Game can force the agriculture folks to paying $10,000 per permit, you, you better know that they're going to come after the wells at $10,000 per permit. This, this is a tremendous funding source that the Department of Fish and Game can come forward with. We should not, under any circumstances, allow any department of the state of California, because of budget problems or any other kind of a problem, to be able to devise ways to fund themselves. That's not America. That's not the way, the way we've been brought up. We, we, uh, um, we, need to be, we need to be looking at the reasons for things that are going on here. One of the reasons the Department of Fish and Game says there's a problem up in the Scott and Shasta River Valleys is because of the silver salmon that the silver salmon are not coming back in large enough numbers. Well, first of all, let's stop and think of one thing. The silver salmon are not native to the Scott and Shasta River Valleys. They were introduced into those two valleys and into the Klamath River back in the mid to early, early to mid 1800s. So they're not a native fish to start with. When they say the fish aren't coming back, then it has to be something wrong with the Klamath River and something wrong with the, with the Scott and Shasta River and other rivers in the, uh, in the Klamath River Basin. Stop and think. Salmon don't stay in the rivers year-round all their lives. Salmon leave and go out into the Pacific Ocean. Those salmon go out in the Pacific Ocean. They can range clear over into Russian waters, into the Western Pacific. And the process I happen to know of spending many years up in the state of Alaska and spending a, a, some time on the North Pacific Fisheries Management Council 15 member advisory panel, I learned a lot about the fisheries in the state of Alaska. Now there is a, a, there is a directed fishery by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game and the Shumigan Islands Group, which is southwest of Kodiak Island and just off the Alaska Peninsula. In that group, in June and July of the year, they have a pink salmon fishery. It's a directed pink salmon fishery. The bycatch in that fishery is silver salmon. Now back in, it was either 1994 or 1995, that directed fishery caught 36 million, 36 million pink salmon. There was a large number of silver salmon caught in that bycatch upwards of half a million to, to a, a million, a little over maybe a million and a half, somewhere in that general range. A million and a half fish is a lot of fish when you stop and think that, that, that those fish would be coming, going back to Cook Bay in Alaska, coming back to British Columbia, and then coming back down the coast, Washington, Oregon, and into California, and into the San Francisco uh, uh, drainage at Sacramento River, Feather River, our, our rivers down here, Klamath River. So when you stop and think of what's going on, the, 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 this, whole, this whole setup here is, uh, it is uh, really um, a screen 
to make things look like it's all the ranchers and all the farmers' fault for why these fish are not coming back. There's a heck of a lot more to this story than what we're talking about. Now, I would like to go forward. We've talked about the 1600 permits, talked about the, uh, the uh, fish going out into the high seas. Now, I would also like to talk about uh, the, uh, the direction of, of AB 2376. The first uh, uh, directive was to clarify and streamline the state's permitting process and allow those applying for permits to track the application process online. Well, first of all, if you're clarifying and streamlining the state's permitting process, why do you even have a permitting process in the first place? These people have water rights to start with. They shouldn't have to buy a permit. They should not have to pay uh, $10,000 per permit. Number two, working to better communicate with rural residents. <laughs> you can better communicate with rural residents when you don't try to force them out of business and try to get into their pocket deeper. Uh, number three, increase coordination with local governments, Indian tribes, and federal officials. Well, you can have better coordination when, when uh, the Fish and Game Department and the state of California sits down at the table eye to eye on a level playing field and talks to the people, the citizens of California. Number four, finding ways to keep decisions based on scientific evidence isolated from the political process while still promoting dialogue between scientists and policy makers. That's real easy. Let all the scientists sit at the table. There's scientists in the state of California, Oregon, Washington, and in the state of Alaska that realize that sometimes the, uh, the State Department of Fish and Game scientists, scientists do not come up with the, the exact uh, uh, scientific process when they start uh, looking at fish and wildlife. Um, and here, here's a real good one here. Remember back up, remember to clarify the permitting process. Adding more stringent penalties for those caught harming wildlife, including the possibilities of creating a special prosecutor in Sacramento to try such cases. This means that somebody up in the, in the Scott River Valley that doesn't buy a permit and, and uh, goes ahead and, uh, and draws water out of, uh, out of the uh, Shasta River uh, to water a garden. I know there happens to be an 83-year-old lady up there that all she uses the diversion for is to water her little garden. And she'd have to pay $10,000. Let's say she draws water out of it. That means a special prosecutor in Sacramento is going to come after her? We don't. We've got enough laws in the books to protect fishing game as it is now without them becoming Gestapo type situations. Let's go on to the next one. Finding ways to create stable funding source that could include adjusting regulatory fee structures for increased sustainability of key regulatory programs. Ladies and gentlemen, that answers it right there. Finding ways to create stable funding source. This all has to go through the legislature. We don't allow not, not in our former government, we don't allow the Department of Fish and Game to come up with their own sources. This has to go through the legislature, it has to be open, accountable, and transparent before you do anything like what we're talking about right here. This, 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 we need to be stopping this. And keep in mind now, under AB 2376, there's a commission put together. I'm going to mention that here in just a minute, a little bit further. And then using the efforts to partner Using the efforts by partners to promote the F and ADF and G's, I'm sorry, CDF and G's mission. Well, that means we're going to get partners to come together with the Department of Fish and Game to, uh, to present their point. I don't think we need that either, do we? All right, now coming forward with this, with this California Fish and Wildlife Strategic Vision Project. Now see, AB 2376, I have a copy of it right here, the actual bill. But uh, the, the actual bill calls for a strategic vision project. And then there's members of the executive committee, which has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people on the executive committee. This is where a decision is going to be made. Then we have what's called, the, this is a good one, the Blue Ribbon Citizens Commission. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. Members on the Blue Ribbon. And then there's also the, the uh, uh, stakeholder advisory group. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anybody if there's anyone that's a stakeholder, and what we're talking about here is the people of California. And on this, this stakeholder group, there's 30 people here. It's got U.S. government people on here. It's got uh, 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 Yuba County Fish and Game. It's got state water contractors. I mean, uh, wh what happened to the ranchers and the farmers, the yous and me's that are out here? That's what we need to be talking about. So when it comes right down, down to what happened last night, there was a lot of people there that were really upset 
really upset with the format that was going on. No notes were taken. Could all stand there and talk whatever you want to talk about. Uh, one of the people with this commission that was there last night, probably a lady that was there that was actually the leader, said that it was really surprising. They'd had three other previous meetings and they only had one table with 12 chairs and the chairs weren't all full in other areas. But they come to Redding, California, I guess you come up into our country up here where we actually hunt and fish and use the wildlife, that maybe we want to stand up and we want to be heard for what it is we want to say. So, so I'm, I'm saying that we, we, need, we need to... To, to stand up, and, and let, me, let me also make, make this, this comment. Last night, I, made a, I asked a question. Before I, I left my chair, I asked one question. And in that question was, when will there be a meeting to talk to this executive committee? When will there be a meeting to talk to the Blue Ribbon Panel? And when will there be talk to the advisory group? And the answer was, Make your, uh, write your uh, comments out and send them in. You can do that online. That, does, uh, look, that doesn't cut it with me. Gary Cad's not going there. And, and I'm just hoping there's a bunch of you out there that want to go out and point. And that we need to stand up and we need to be saying and doing something about this because the Department of Fish and Game being allowed to devise their own strategies to fund themselves, what are you going to do? Turn around one of these days and have, have DOT finding, Department of Transportation find a way to fund themselves? I mean, you can go all the way down, down through, uh, through state government. I mean, we've got the Climate Action Plan coming at us here very shortly that I've been working on. That's another issue for another time. But that's another thing that's going to be uh, uh, coming at us. So I, I'm going to wind this up and, and let it go at that. But I hope we get a group together and we come, come hard. Come hard at the fishing game and tell them, no, this is not where we're going. Thank you very much for listening to me.